You're listening to Inside Melbourne, the official podcast of the Melbourne Football Club. Proudly presented by Zurich Insurance, ensuring the things you truly love, like this podcast. Hey, Dees fans, welcome to Inside Melbourne. My name is Ben Gibson, joined by Mitch Hannon and Jaden Hunt after another strange weekend in the year 2020. Welcome, boys. Uh, thanks, Benny. Good to be here. Thanks, Benny. Thanks Before we get into all that, Jaden, the first thing I need to address is I couldn't take any photos of you on Sunday because of your haircut. Uh, what went wrong there? Yeah, I was, I was pretty filthy on you. I told you pretty early on in the onset, don't take any pictures. Ah, just the hairdresser, just like usual, took a bit more off than I wanted, so I was trying to hide it. I guess the week off gave me an extra week of growth, but you stitched me out there, putting me out with a couple of photos. But yeah, hopefully it gets some more length in it soon. Yeah, make sure it gets right before a Channel 7 game on Sunday. There are plenty of hair questions coming in a little later on from questions from the outer, so that will be a bit of fun. But firstly, there is a lot going on in the AFL world at the moment. How did you guys find out that you wouldn't be playing a game uh, 24 hours out on Sunday? I, yeah. I started off yeah. at, the, at the beach on Sunday, or oh, Saturday Arvo. And um, I'd just come back in from the water, actually, and my phone was lit up with WhatsApp messages from some of the guys, pretty much. So we'd all just been discussing it, that we may maybe not be playing, and that's how I found out. Yeah, it was probably a space of an hour and a half. We got a, a WhatsApp message with all the players, and everyone was just clueless what's going on. And firstly, there was rumours that someone's got in the league, didn't know who, and then we heard it was Essendon, and Conor McKenna came out. So it was basically, yeah, like 20 so or so minutes before Gill sort of announced that we, we knew we weren't playing, but we weren't sure if we we're going to play later on this week or completely canned or, yeah, so it was a bit of, bit of a shambles, but yeah. no, it all got explained in due course and we'll just take it, take it as it comes, I guess. Yeah, it all moved pretty quickly. What was the communication from the club like? Yeah, they were pretty good. They were, I think, in a, on a call with um, Gil, um, so they couldn't get it to us straight away but there was messages coming through from um yeah a few important people just to let us know what's going on and yeah just keep calm and it's, go with it. it's a pretty delicate situation at the moment i'm sure things will change in the next hour and two hours and by the time anyone listens to this podcast but it sounds like only potentially one other Essendon player will miss uh or have to isolate do you guys think we should be playing Essendon for our next game or what's your opinion on that i think Oh, the weekend's gone. We've already played. We've got a game under our belt in terms of loading, so um, it wouldn't make sense to sort of squeeze it in between now and the weekend, obviously. Um, but I like the idea of coming back to it in the near f in the future, whether they have a buy round and then they sort of squeeze in some games that need to be filled in or something like that. Yeah. Um, because obviously you want to have them have the best opportunity to put their best forward te team forward and, yeah. and play us rather than sort of um, having a few not to told they can't play f for that COVID reason. So. Um, I'd like the idea of playing them in the future, that's for sure. Do you feel like we're going to be disadvantaged by this at all? Like we could potentially be playing two games in four or five days. Um, will that worry you? Yeah, I don't think so. With the shorter quarters, it definitely is a lot easier on the body than it, um, in the past, I guess. So, yeah, if it's a couple of four or five day breaks, I think most of us would be pretty comfortable with that. And we have played off short breaks in the past. Anzac Eve last year, um, you turn around in pretty short periods of time. So... I think with Virgo, we'd be pretty confident that we could fire up. Yeah, I'd like to think that we've done a fair bit of work over the summer and even over the COVID break to think that we'd hold us in good stead if we were to, to play on short breaks. So I would be shying away from it. With all these changes and potentially disadvantages to some teams, do you feel like it could get to a point where the season becomes a little bit, not losing credibility, but uh, unfair for some? Yeah, I guess they've got protocols in place and... Um, they put, put shorter quarters in and things like that, I think, to, to sort of safeguard against these things happening because it was always going to expect that there might be someone in the industry to get it. So by having all these sort of protocols in place and shortening games, I think we can sort of handle uh, most things that come up with us, uh, come to us. Obviously, if there's like a second wave that takes out most of the nation, it's going to be pretty hard. But, yeah, I think if people keep doing the right things and little instances like this sort of pop up, I think, the AFL and everyone can sort of handle it. Mitchie, you haven't played a game yet, but Hunty, how have you found that those shorter quarters? Because it, it is impacting the style of footy a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I think it's shown how much a, a fast start sort of matters. Mm. Um, yeah, obviously we're able to do that against Carlton. Didn't do much after that, but um, yeah, just having that fast start is really important. And it definitely is. You are pulling up um, a lot better. 
it's more just the quantity so i guess the games are maybe a little bit more intense and stuff because you can go a bit harder don't have to save as much but yeah you can definitely pull up a lot better from games we're seeing lower score lower scores potentially less skills and those sort of things around the ground do you think that's at all impacted by the training in smaller groups or the non-contact sessions you're getting less match-like training sessions no i wouldn't have thought so um i think there's quite a lot of guys that did some good quality work over the break um we were still allowed to sort of train with one other teammate where we were able to do some of our kicking maybe the contact may be an issue because we weren't allowed to do a lot of that um and then we come back in after a three-week layoff sorry three-week sort of mini pre-season into some full-on games and contact that might have, that might play a part in sort of some teams falling down and not being ready for it. But um, I would say that the speed and the skill of the game is definitely still there. We've had a lot of restrictions in personal life, obviously not being able to do as much as everyone else in the world. How challenging have you found that? Uh, it's been frustrating, I must say. Uh, I'm living in an apartment at the moment, so it's not much fun sort of being cooped up in this little sort of confined box just overlooking the city. Um, but. I guess we've, we've been told to be flexible through this period um, and we're hoping that there'll be a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, so uh, it hasn't phased me too much. Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, just a bit of connection you lose with your friends and stuff, not being able to see them. Um, I've actually moved back home with mum and dad, so that's been <laughs> yeah. a little bit different for me. So, yeah, I was living with a few friends and just didn't want to sort of have the restrictions on them. Um, but, yeah, back home, so a little bit different, but getting my meals cooked for me, which is nice. After the news came out about Connor, did, did it sort of hit home a little bit of why we're doing all this? Like, it, it is a, a pretty serious thing for everyone within the AFL industry to take seriously. Yeah, I think just the last two weeks, not just in footy, but in society as well, I think um, I was ve definitely feeling a lot more comfortable things, thinking yeah. just everything was just going to roll on and we'll start living normally again. But then obviously this new sort of wave and the, uh, what happened with Connor sort of, yeah, just uh, made me realise that it is a thing we're going to have to deal with for a little bit longer than I first thought. The COVID tests have been a big talking point. You've literally had one five minutes ago before you <laughs> stepped in here. How exactly have you found them? <laughs> I haven't been a huge fan, to be honest. It's um, They've gotten better, I must say. I think something's changed within the protocols that they're a little bit more, little bit more friendly. <laughs> but um, the nurse laughing just laughing behind. Yeah. So I think they're going to stick it up, Mitch, <laughs> a lot deeper next time. <laughs> I reckon the first three or four I had, I honestly felt like my brain was getting tickled from the inside and I just, oh, I started watering and I was dreading the next one. So, um, but they've gotten easier. I feel like there's a few different techniques going around. At one stage, <laughs> my finger was measured before I got it stuck had up that my one. nose. My mum said to me after that, how would Jaden Hunt go? Because yeah. he has massive fingers. Have yeah. a look at it. Oh, I was absolutely spewing. I think <laughs> the first one I didn't get measured and then there was a week there where my finger got kept on getting measured. I'm just like, this is an absolute <laughs> stitch up because yeah, I do have, do have pretty long skinny fingers, so the thing was going right up and took a, took a while to recover there. <laughs> I reckon you might have to remind the fans, have a look at that, that big finger of yours. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's going a long way into your head, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's like when you do it, it's like straight up there. So if you think there's something going like deep back there, it's yeah, not comfortable. <laughs> not pleasant, but if anyone needs to get tested, make sure you do. It's not the end of the world. Uh, what are your thoughts on the hubs? The, obviously, West Coast aren't enjoying it too much at the moment. I, if we potentially had to go somewhere else, would you be open to it? I definitely would be. Um, but I'm in a sort of a slightly different circumstance to the rest of the mm -hmm. team in the sense that I don't have a lot tying me here. I just live with one of my close mates. Um, my family's sort of spread all over the country. So um, apart from missing my friends, um, I'd be f just fine relocating for wherever we needed to go. But yeah. I could completely understand other people who have family. Um, especially kids and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. We had a practice match on Sunday, as we sort of touched on. It's a pretty competitive hit out, 40 blokes available. Um, do things feel pretty tense out there? Everyone yeah, falling well, for a spot? Well, yeah, as of Saturday afternoon, we're both preparing to play um, yeah, Essendon in some sort of capacity. So we're all ready to go for a game. So pretty much the coach just said, treat it like an AFL game. We'll get both sides. We were in different change rooms. Um, stuff like that. Like there was a few rotations swapping, but most of the teams stayed the same throughout the day. And yeah, it's really, really hot, hotly contested because we're so fit and there's so many guys up for selection. There's a lot of yeah, real line balls of who to go with. So I think everyone's was was keen to sort of press their claims. Mitch, you, you haven't played too much footy recently. It was nice to just get another hit out under your belt. It definitely was, yeah. Especially being on the G itself. Yeah. I think just touching on Hunty's point, it's hard not to go out there and have that level of competitiveness just being instilled in you from running out on the turf so um but definitely gave me more conf confidence that um i'm feeling fit and ready and um 
rearing to go whenever I get the opportunity to, for an AFL game. So just another one under the belt. Also good. good to have a taste of playing in an empty MCG. It was a pretty unbelievable feeling, wasn't it? It was. It was very hollow. Um, you could like you could see on the TV games, you can hear everything that's going on, yeah. every call, every bit of frustration or celebration. Um, it's unique. It's it's definitely very different. Hunter, you've earned your spot back in the side after missing round one. How do you think over that uh, isolation period, how did that benefit you? Did you put in a lot of work to sort of push your claim? Yeah, um, I sort of, yeah, was meeting with Goody over Zoom a few times and just, yeah, I really just saw myself to sort of as an extra pre-season. Um, yeah, obviously didn't get into the round one, so I just saw, thought, is it just an, an extra chance to really, um, yeah, really get some fitness, really get my confidence up. So I sort of, yeah, attacked it pretty hard and, yeah, came ready to train when we came back. And, yeah, I was just had my, my eyes on that round two spot. So, yeah, I was just, I was told him I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my spot back. And, yeah, was lucky enough to get it. So hopefully it can just continue my form. And the team that was named for round three, we didn't get to see it out in the park, but it was a small forward line. Obviously, the, both of you slotting in there, uh, Jackson was out. Do you think that small forward mix could be quite dangerous? I definitely think so, yeah. yeah. I think with lacking a bit of height, you sort of gain a little bit of speed. So mm. me and Hunty would have loved, like, loved being out in the flanks, running around, kicking the ball together. So um, there's obviously benefits from a tall and a small, but I think... Um, We've obviously got Tommy Mack down there for um, a key forward and a bit of height, but the likes of Fritch and Melksham and myself and Jaden and, and Cozzy, um, I feel like are just as capable. Hopefully we see a glimpse of that this weekend. Just before we go to the break, we've got to give a plug to Mendel. That is uh, <laughs> on both of your tops. Uh, Mitchie, talk us through how that's going. It's by coincidence, I must say. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't plan this, but um, no, it's going well. It's just been a little passion project of mine for about a year now. Um, so it's a non-profit label that supports men's mental health. Um, so we just want to sort of look at to, like igniting some conversation amongst men our age um, through a sort of fashionable label. Um, as you can see on Jade and I, we've sort of colour coordinated today, but um, no, it's going well. It's been good fun. Well, yeah, I sort of woke up thinking, <laughs> I was saying before, I was thinking, I'll just give him a subtle helping hand here and then rocked up, we're both in the black Mendel. It's almost like a campaign happening. So, yeah, well, at least we get the message across. Yeah, That's right. Well, fans out there, make sure you jump on the socials and give Mendel a follow and help Mitchy out. So we'll be back after this with questions from the outer. Thanks to our co-principal partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich Insurance. For over 100 years, they've been insuring the people and things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love the Ds. You're listening to Inside Melbourne here with Mitch Hannon and Jaden Hunt. Questions from the outer. First one from a five-year-old named Zoe. Who is your favourite superhero? Uh, I've always been a big Batman fan. I uh, don't really know where it started, but yeah, I'd definitely go him. And yourself, Mitchie? Look, I don't have many superhero favourites, but if I had to choose one, I'd probably go with the Hulk, I reckon. <laughs> Big green man. And we are just talking in the break, you both remember Zoe? I do, yeah. I met her a couple of times at training, um, where she actually, I think it might have been one of the kids' clinics we had at Gosh's Paddock, and she was a beautiful young girl that came up and sort of sat by my side for the day, and then since then I've been in sort of, some sort of contact every now and then through a few video messages just to shout out to her and say hello and sort of help her through her journey with a bit of eye surgery so yeah i was pretty similar as well so yeah hope she's all going well and the family as well as well very good uh next question from corey Jaden, what position do you enjoy playing the most on the field yeah so yeah forward at the moment definitely um yeah liking it up there being able to sort of dictate your own opponent but yeah i see myself as pretty flexible so i'm sort of happy to go everywhere but for the time being we'll be forward and a question from Bailey Fritch. Who is the biggest burger at the club? Well, I think he just answered himself. He is the biggest burger <laughs> Can there you is. talk us through what that means? Oh, it's just... I guess it comes from my school with, my, with all my friends. It's burgers just something when... Someone would just does something, you're thinking, like, oh, come on, mate. Like, yeah, grow up a little bit there. So, yeah. Fritter, like, he looks like... Do you know anyone know the show Beavis and Butthead? <laughs> it's, a, it's an old show back in the day, but, yeah... Frida, if you look it up, is a dead set ring at a beaver. So, yeah, he'd be the biggest burger there is. We might have to look that one up. <laughs> uh, next question from Will. A lot coming through about your running and your speed. Did you do any track when you were younger? Uh, not really, nah. I did it in year 12. Um, sort of just uh, ran in house athletics and sort of joined the ass team from that. But, nah, I was always pretty small. I just didn't really... I was always sort of quick, but, yeah, with my growth spurt when I was 18, that's when the the speed really came about. 
Question from M. Who's the funniest teammate? Anyone make you laugh? <laughs> funniest? Oh, I'd probably go Gorney. It's a pretty simple question, but yeah, he does does make me giggle quite a bit. Thoughts, Mitchy? Yeah, I tend to agree. I feel like track's an easy answer as well, but purely just because he just does some stupid things. Yeah. Laugh so. at him, not with him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Always laughing at him. Question from Sophie. Who is the best prankster at the club? Nibbler. Yeah. Alex Neil Bullman, honestly, lives for pranks. Yeah. He got me, actually, in my first year, or on my first flight to an away game, and he's, like, sitting next to me, and he's like, Mitch, they, someone just said over the thing, like, is Mitch Hannon on the flight? Could he please press the... And I'm, like, full of, like angst and energy as it is because it's my first away flight and I'm like oh yeah right and I press the button and the, sure enough the lady comes along <laughs> she's like well, you want something and he's just sitting there pissing himself and just he lives for a prank that guy that is fantastic one from Sophie if you had to live with one person in the club who would you choose oh I don't know I'd go Sparks we've got the same sort of taste in music yeah. he'd be a pretty chill guy to live with yeah he'd right? be pretty nice uh, one from Emma, who is the most likely to fall asleep on the physio's table? I know Cozzy fell asleep in a team meeting. That came <laughs> up in the podcast a few weeks ago. What about the physio table? Oh. I don't know. I, I can, in a massage, I can often go to sleep. Just on my belly, just getting a back massage. So I'm so used to it uh, that I can fall asleep occasionally. I've, I've definitely fallen asleep in a massage <laughs> before. I think you know as well because I'm about five minutes in and I'll just do a giant twitch. <laughs> like. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right, we're hitting the phase of questions all about your appearance here, Hunty. Emmett wanted to know how you're so sexy. We'll skip past that. <laughs> but Lucy wants to know if you'd consider a mullet. A mullet. I have thought about it. I've actually gone the quite the opposite. I'm not happy with this haircut, but uh, I don't know. Uh, sticking to what i got at the moment, we'll see how it goes. Sean's asking what made you go the headband, not just the original black one, but the quite outrageous looking one uh i guess more it was more thicker so it actually held my hair back better and a bit of team colors in there as well thought i'd try something different there was a bit of controversy around that at the time wasn't there you wearing a colored headband yeah i was sort of uh built up more i was just wearing it at training and a reporter asked why don't you wear it in a game and the current rules didn't allow it or whatever so i said oh not allowed to and then all of a sudden i'm fighting the afl trying to get it <laughs> trying to get this band headband on there but yeah, eventually they said yes, and so I was like, all right, I'll wear it. But, yeah, I didn't really matter. Question here from Tom Murphy. Uh, Troy Murphy, sorry. Hi, Jaden. I saw you at Oktoberfest and planted one on your lips. Was it the best <laughs> kiss of your life? <laughs> oh, I cannot remember that, but I'm also not saying it didn't happen. Um, Oktoberfest <laughs> is a very fun time, so it's full of energy. You don't know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so we can't deny that one. One here from Tom there's always some strange questions. Jaden, how many lemons could you eat with a knife and fork in 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually think that might be... What, what's, his, what's the name? Uh, Tom, not sure the surname. Not sure. Um, lemon and... What is it? Knife and fork and lemon in 10 minutes. Yeah. How many could you get through? I can I could get through three. Really? Gee yeah. whiz. That's an effort. I don't think I could get through one. No. <laughs> I had a lemon tree when I was growing up, so... Yeah. I, I could get through it. Put in the practice. <laughs> one from me here... You've put up one of the greatest Instagram posts I reckon I've ever seen uh, in Sri Lanka about finding a double banana on, on the fruit <laughs> on the fruit theory. Uh, how was that for you? Great, oh. great excitement. <laughs> well, that was a great excitement. Don't tell me. Oh, a couple of can join boys. Hey boys. Hey boys. Um, I sort of yeah. I grew up having a banana a day and. Um, so you get all different sorts of shapes and sizes. But then I, when I saw this one, I was thinking, there's a little curve in there, like in the middle, a little crease. What's going to happen here? Lucky enough, open it up and it was a double banana. As rare as they come, like a double egg. Jackpot. A double, you know, you get double uh, yoked eggs sometimes. Yeah. Well, you can. You can, can, <laughs> you can get <laughs> that. Good luck, isn't it? But even rare as a double banana. So, yeah, I was absolutely thrilled. Massive win. <laughs> Mitch, is it true your dad doesn't think you were best on ground in the <laughs> under-18s grand final from Nick? That is true, actually. <laughs> uh, we, we won the flag. I managed to get best on. And um, one of my good mates, Nick, um, he had a good game. And my dad went straight up to him. I think I was in the vicinity as well. and was like, Nick, I think you deserve best on ground, mate. Like, a bit stiff there. <laughs> I heard it in my peripheral. And I was like, fair enough. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> ah, well, Nick's not playing AFL. So. <laughs> Ru Rusty's asking, what will you name your firstborn child? Don't know if we're thinking that far ahead. Strange question. Any thoughts? Oh, is that Rutsy? Oh, Rutsy, maybe. Oh, he wants me to say Angus, but yeah, I think he's going to call his son Angus. 
Uh, people will not understand that, but it's a little in joke we got going about the name Angus, so we'll leave that. Let that go. There's always some in jokes in the questions <laughs> from the outer. We love them. When is Melbourne going to make a grand final? That's a tough question. Uh, hard to really answer. The following one from Georgie is when can we see the 2018 glory again? Uh, personally, I think the 2018 season was heightened a little bit by a couple of wins. We only fell into the eight. Do you think we can almost get past that and be more of a top side in, in the next year or two? I definitely think we can. Yeah, we've had some great inclusions with some guys um, like the two wingmen, Tomlinson and, and Ed, that um, have joined. And I think we've obviously got some talent that are starting to sort of mature and grow now. So I think within the next sort of five-year block, you'll see Melbourne sort of develop into a pretty pretty serious team. So I'd like to think very soon. Yeah. yeah, I think just with our group, still pretty young and inexperienced, I think we just need those like sort of two or three wins in a row really get the confidence up and then... Once we sort of get that momentum, I reckon everyone will sort of uh, lift a level and, yeah, I'm very confident. Yeah, for sure. I think the list is probably looking in better shape than it was two years ago, as you said, a few additions. So hopefully we see that soon. Uh, will there be changes this week from Caden? I think uh, Goody alluded to the fact that the same 22 won't necessarily be locked in for the Geelong game. Is that correct? He did say that, yeah. yeah. We, um, it kind of gives everyone extra motivation. That's yeah. probably where the competitiveness came from on the weekend that... Um, Guys are still fighting for spot and we're pretty healthy as a list at the moment. So you never know. There could be changes. Uh, Good position to be in. Not so much for you two who were named <laughs> in that side. Evan asking, who did you support growing up? Oh, I grew up barracking for West Coast. West Coast? Yeah, my dad's from Perth. So. Yeah, I was a big Collingwood man. Even Good. called my golden retriever Buckley. So it was dire. <laughs> Buckley. Darcy, who would win in a fight between you two? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this would be—it would be hard to get the aggression. I reckon it would have to be a, a big play. It'd be a good matchup, I'd reckon. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, I've got a fly kick in me, so if I was allowed <laughs> to pull that yeah, out, pull that out. Yeah. <laughs> He's got me covered there. <laughs> well, uh, if you could have a side career to AFL, what would it be, from Claire? Side career. Mendel. You sort of got one, don't you? <laughs> Mendel. Nah. Um, side career, golfer as well. Yeah. Yeah, something in business. Studying uh, commerce at uni, so something in that field. Yeah. Something in fruit, potentially. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Double uh, banana exploration. <laughs> Mealy, what's your f go to meal before and after a game? Um, oh, pretty stock standard. I loved gnocchi the night before, yeah. gnocchi pasta. Um, afterwards, a burger of some description goes down a treat. Yeah. Mitch, how difficult is it to come back after a while out of the game and be confident of having an immediate impact? Uh, it's a tough one. No. Um, you kind of sort of forget what it's like to sort of be out in amongst um, the AFL environment again. So uh, there's definitely a few nerves there, but I'm pretty confident that I've done quite a bit of running and um, physical contact and training over this, this layoff. Um, so I'd like to think I'm in pretty good physical shape and could have an impact. And from Steph, favourite game you've played in and why? Ooh. I don't know. I always like the Anzac Eve games. Yeah. Um, don't have one in particular but I just think the feeling of sort of um, walking out there every, all the lights are off 90,000 people are dead dead quiet uh, dead silent for the uh, last post yeah it's such a surreal feeling so I always get up and about for that game mine would probably oh I'd have a couple I love playing in Alice Springs I just love yeah. the spectacle of like the community sort of vibe you feel like you're playing country footy a little bit and then there's the beautiful backdrop um, but in terms of the atmosphere... Surely the goal. Uh, <laughs> Surely. <laughs> that Geelong and Hawthorne games, yeah, the two finals in 2018, were some of the, like, my fondest memories. Just the, uh, the atmosphere, the crowd, the noise. It's just amazing. We're coming up against Geelong this week. Absolutely great memories. Uh, talk us through that goal. Uh, you won't want to talk about it too much. How many times have you rewatched it? Oh, I couldn't tell you, but like I've been, I've been sent it that many times. Yeah. I still get sent it these days, being like, "Have you seen this Titanic remix?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, well, we always uh, redo BT's commentary just in, in the office." Cause <laughs> so it, does it, Bailey Fritch, actually. It is an iconic <laughs> moment. Uh, what I guess the crowd at that point was probably the loudest you've ever ever experienced at an AFL game. Yeah, definitely. I think you, I look back on it now, and you don't really sort of, um, you're not really aware of the magnitude of the moment as it's happening. You're just playing footy, but. Um, I definitely do remember after kicking the goal, looking at Spargo um, and sort of hearing the noise and being like, Jesus, what just happened? So it's definitely will go down as one of my, my fondest memories 
playing in a game um, and probably the loudest crowd I've ever heard. If you rewatch that final, I reckon Spargo was the first to every single goal kicker to celebrate. It was <laughs> unbelievable. Celebrate a king. There was a question that came through asking if you ever considered giving it off. You ran probably a good 100 metres with the ball. Was it yeah. always eyes for the goals? I genuinely did. I, I'd like <laughs> to say that I'm an unselfish footballer and I remember trying to think I'm going to give this off to, I think it might have been Jack Viney over the back or Spargo and you can sort of see me halt a couple of times and then um, no, I just... I don't know. The rest just happened. <laughs> <laughs> the rest is history. We do have the Cats again this week. Hopefully we see some of those sort of moments once again. Interesting team, Geelong. They got done by 32 points round one, smashed Hawthorne by 10 goals in round two and just lost to Carlton by two points. Hard to get a read of where they're at. It is a little bit, but history says they're, they're a great team and I, f I still feel like they're, um, they'll come out extremely hungry to sort of, sort of rectify those, um, those losses. So there's no doubt that they'll be going all guns blazing this week and we'll have to be ready. Well, hopefully we see you two boys in that lineup. Uh, looking forward to that very much. Thanks for joining us on Inside Melbourne. Uh, no worries. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Thank Benny. you. This Cheers. has been Inside Melbourne, proudly brought to you by Zurich. <laughs>